Hi there everyone, welcome back to another video here with me Jenny Kirk up in the loft on Weir Yard and today something a little bit different. Unfortunately the video that we planned for today we haven't been able to film it uh, because of uh, illness unfortunately. Covered monkeys uh, feeling a bit under the weather so not to worry what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take you on a tour through the full locomotive collection that I've got up here and uh, it's something that uh, some of you have been asking for actually so I thought I would oblige and just take you through some of the collection. So without further ado, in association with our sponsor Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories, uh, we're going to have a look through all of the locomotives that I've got available up here to run on Weir Yard. <laughs> pretty big layout actually up here and uh, I, I do run it in many different guises and at the moment it's all laid out here for BR Blue Tops period. So first off I'm going to show you the locomotives that are actually on the layout. That's probably the easiest thing to do. So down here we've got some of my class 3 collection and uh, I've talked about these before. I do love small shunting locomotives. On the left, 03371 was a Rails uh, Rail Express exclusive, um, and I picked it up second hand. They did two of the Class 3s when Backman brought out its fully retooled examples, um, and that's partnered up with the main range version that came out at the same time, 03066. And behind that, the Helgen Class 7 Shunter is 07010. I really do like that model and I'm looking forward to trying to get hold of a few more of the Topps Blue versions. It is a really great model. In the background you can see it's a uh, Class 46 I've got over there. It's a Backman model and uh, another Backman 20 as well there on the uh, uh, the uh, car train too. Further over there, hiding away in the background, you just about make out the Helgen Class 26. I think that's 26008 and um, I do really like a lot of the Helgen locomotives. I think they're really well made and uh, some really great models of some interesting prototypes. Moving around to the shed area and uh, as I said before we're on uh, sort of late 1970s guys up here in uh, Weir Yard. So at the front a couple of my class 25s, in fact the one on the left 25087 that was the first ever release in BR Tops Blue, I believe, by Backman when they brought this out in, I think, probably about 2002, 2003, something like that. A couple of 24s. I think one of those 24081 at the front, that was the first Tops Blue release of the Class 24 by Backman. Behind that, 24035. And then there's... Um, it's basically 24s. That one's actually a renumbering. I bought this second hand. It had already been renumbered and I have a very soft spot for the uh, BR Solzers. So um, 24047 is slightly unusual in that respect. Uh, more 25s. Eisteth uh which is uh, the Regional Railways 37.4. It's a Backman model with a Hornby TTS sound chip. I do need to actually change the speaker. Not really happy with the sound quality I'm getting out of that. So I do have an iPhone speaker I want to test out in it. Um, that 37 there has got uh, oh, I can never remember, sound tracks or Econo tracks. Um, it's a budget sound decoder. It's um, more expensive than TTS, but less expensive than uh, some of the uh, the other the, the the next tier up. So it's about fifty pounds for a sound chip. And actually, the 37 does sound pretty good. More 25s. Uh, class 20 there. That is sound fitted. Uh, again, issues with the speaker. So I'm going to be looking to upgrade that. And a Helgen Class 27. Uh, and we did that as a review comparatively recently. And I really do like that livery. Sat on the turntable. It's the um, Class 44 that I've got, and uh, I'm really growing to love these peaks, it has to be said. 
further round on these roads round here, uh, we've got the uh, Regional Railways Livery Class 31, all singing, all dancing from Hornby. Class 25083, one of my favourite locos. Not really quite sure why, just really like it. Weathered Class 20 and uh, there's a sound fitted Class 8 over there as well. Uh, one final locomotive in this area, the Model Zone Special uh, uh, Edition Starlet 08721. Right at the point just before they went broke uh, and went to liquidation, this came out and uh, I really do like it. It's a local locomotive, or was, uh, Red Bank Sidings, I believe that this was the, the resident shunter for for a long time. So um, that's just sat there at the moment. This is a Thompson 01. You won't have seen this because this is waiting to be reviewed. So just been doing some test running of it. Uh, been wanting one of these models for a while. Came up cheap, brand new, so uh, would have been rude not to. And then a Class 8 in a weathered, faded BR Blue 08507. Bankman Collectors Club Special Edition. And really do love that model. I really do wish, actually, that they put out more locomotives in this sort of faded, weathered look. And then, of course, the main feature. I have been putting up a whole load more shelving. So we've got in uh, BR Green a 25, 24, another 25. And then we've got a standard Class 4 tank, Fairburn tank, L1. Class 20, that's an NRM special version, and I have sound fitted that, and actually the TTS sound in that works really well. Daypole Class 29, currently my pick for Locomotive of the Year 2020. Helgen Class 17 in the Ribble Cement Special Livery. Chromatic Blue 25, Model Zone Special Commission. Followed by Waterman Railways Livery Class 20 is 20042. You recognise that as being the loco that we had trundling around. And the final of Great Model Railway Challenge. Uh, there's Daypole Class 73. Mine runs really, really well. I don't know what people are complaining about with these. I think they're actually a really great model. Had no problems whatsoever. Ditto for the 22 next to it. Silky smooth runner, really do like that model. And then we get a Helgen 76, uh, 76022 um, custom weathering on there. I didn't pay for that. I got it secondhand like that. Really lucky because it's a great weathering job somebody's done on there. Hornby 71, again, another great runner. Hiding away at the back there, uh, split into two lots of two coaches is my class 411. Then I've got a class 401, 402. Uh, again, unsung heroes of the Hornby range. Class 101, again, that's got an Econotrack soundtrack. So never remember that budget sound chip I talked to you about. It's, you can set it between it's something like six different locomotive sounds, including first generation DMU. So it's the cheapest way of getting first generation DMU to kick out some sounds. And then I've got my three class 108. I've got plain rail blue, blue grey, and then Greater Manchester uh, GMPTE. And I've got my Ethel 3. Again, Batman Special Commission. Do like this. These 25 really does suit Intercity. And then Firefly, this was one that was uh, given to me by one of the uh, big um, uh, backers of the channel. Really generous as Firefly. So big, big thank you to Somerset Andy for that. Then we've got the Hornby Maud, the J36. Uh, recently been given one of these by Tim's Trains. Again, big, big thank you for the support for the channel. Behind which is the... Uh, uh, class 07, which is actually the War Department 280. Uh, Butler Henderson, NRM Special Commission, B17 at the front there, J15. And then J39, that's a Backman model split chassis, but I have hardwired DCC fitted it. Quite pleased with that. One of my favourite locos, the GWR72XX Mikado tank, Jubilee. Uh, never remember whether it's a 4MT or a 5MT. That is actually a Backman model. The Drummond 700, and then from the corner, uh, Bully Day is an Intercity Livery 37.4, Helgen 52, NRM uh, Deltic, great model that. Then I've got Class 43, 42, 28, that's a Helgen 419, back to Backman. There's my Class 45, 55020 Nimbus, the Class 128 from Helgen, that is another great model. Pair of Hornby Class 50s. 
Backman 85, Daypol class 122, another great model. And then my favourite model of them all is the London Brighton and South Coast Railway Marsh Umber liveried H1 Atlantic. And there's the Q1. Uh, it's one that keeps getting requested, actually. The Q1 does seem to be a very popular loco. And then I've got a pair of Backman uh, G2As. And then we get on to my Robinson 8K slash uh, 01 class collection. Although actually the first one there is the Great Western version. So even though it's in BR livery, it's 33.6. And you can tell from the Swindonized dome. And then we've got, um, these are the Robinson 04 in the BR livery. So I've got four of these. Um, really got a thing for them. Duchess of Montrose, uh, one which really pleased to get that in modern super detail form. Lord Nelson, and then part of my A4 collection. There's four there, DCC fitted, and at least one of those has got DCC sound. And then I've got my uh, unrebuilt uh, Bulliard. Uh, that's actually quite an older version of the Princess Royal. It's been updated twice since then. Most recent versions just come out, but actually the older version does hold its own. Then again, Tim's Trains very kindly sent me number 583, I think it is. Uh, and then I've also got the original 592. So really lucky to have both of the ornate SECR versions, plus the simplified number 271 and the austerity grey version. And then uh, I've got Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, uh, 4F I think that is, as number 58. Uh, apparently one of the fastest selling models of them all uh, from the Batman range. It was a special commission, sold out within I think about 48 hours. And then I've got uh, is Lord Nelson, I'm getting confused now between that and the previous one I showed you. Um, but then next to that I've got a V2. A1, uh, Q6, followed by, uh, I think that is actually, is it 4470? Yeah, that's my um, Flying Scotsman. Again, very kindly provided by Tim's Trains. There will be a review on that. And then I got uh, my Robinson 8K in the NRM Special Commission of the Great Central Railway livery. Then King, uh, Schools Class. Midland Compound, and then we've got my uh, City Class, which is City of London. Um, no, actually, no, that's the schools. So that one is an N Class, and that's another N Class there. I must have missed that. Uh, another City Class in uh, Wartime Khaki. Oh, uh, next to it, I'm just trying to get in a little bit closer. It's quite difficult. I've got a lot of stuff knocking around so that's my uh, uh robinson 9j stroke j11 but in great central railway livery that is midland railway 4f then i've got my um great northern atlantic uh duchess of abercorn who um that is a saint i think or is that no that's the king which means that the one back here is St. Patrick or something like that? Oh, I can never remember whether it's a Grange, a Saint. Um, I get quite confused with the Great Western liveried stuff. Um, somebody will correct me and scoff at my lack of knowledge. Uh, right, what else have I got? Sorry, I'm probably sounding quite distant. I'm having to lean right over. Lurking away in the back there, that's the Dean Goods in ROD livery. Then the uh, Dave Pole uh, Great Western rail car that we reviewed a little while ago. And then we've got a K3, Ivert 2MT, and final one is a 3F uh, Batman model with a custom weathering job. Right. Sorry, that's um, if I sounded a bit too distant, it's just because of the difficulty in getting in there. But we're not done. We move on to shunting locomotives. So uh, there's the Midland Railway livery. Well, it's actually LMS Crimson Ginty next to the Hatton's P class. And then part of my class 8 collection. One of those is a class 9. Can't remember which one. 
And then, of course, we've got the Longmore Military Railway, um, ostensibly, I think it's a class, it's either a class 10 or a class 11 is what it's closer to. But actually, obviously, Models Zone Special Commission and they use the class 8 um, body shell. Uh, class 4, that's the one that IDCC fitted, the split chassis. Another Class 8, that's a Hornby one. Then the Model Zone Special Commission are the Class 3 in Network Southeast. Moving on up, J50, next to CPC liveried Andrew Barclay, a trio of Sentinels. Uh, the middle one's the rod drive, the other two are the chain drive. Uh, Peckett B2, Terrier. And then my W4 Peckett collection. Got a Ginty, Austerity, uh, Brighton E4, I think it's E4. That's a, a Backman model, but in the London Brighton South Coast Railway livery. 262 Prairie Tank, a uh, pair of Aspinall radials. Then we've got the uh, Adams radial, pair of J50s. Enwin's 3D liveried Hunslet. Uh, we've got London Transport Pannier next to two of the uh, uh, Metropolitan Bobos. Again, Helgen, really great locos. Next to them, gosh, uh, what do we got? A Webb Coal Tank, another Ginty. Moving on up, uh, Lancashire and Yorkshire Pugs. That's actually a Daypole one, but they're the same as the Hornby ones. And then, uh, what are these two? I think... Uh, just pull out Ginty, Ginty, Helgen thirteen sixty six class, regular Pannier, another Ginty. Uh, that is the model rail um, USA dock tank, next to Oxford rail uh, N seven, another Lancashire and Yorkshire pug. The uh, that's the Brighton, so the Wainwright H one. Class 5, pair of Class 8s, uh, Monsell N-Class, uh, 56XX next to an M7, another Lancashire and Yorkshire Pug. Uh, what's that next to that? That is the, is that the BT Well Tank? Yeah, BT Well Tank, three austerities, and then we move on to the top row. Three more of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Pugs. I do have a lot of them, soft spot for them. An Electro Tren, I don't even know what class it is. These are quite cheap, good for donor chassis. Class 14, Class 4, uh, B4. That's just the top, the Enwin 3D Fireless Loco waiting for a chassis. Uh, I've got a, another A4 up there. Very top row, another A4 and a Class 4 Diesel Shunter. It's not my complete collection, but it's certainly a reasonable amount of stuff. It has to be said. Ah, right. Oh, gosh, getting out of breath now. Also, I'd like to show you some of these great pictures. These were given to me by Les Cliff. Um, that photo, actually, I've had for a long time. Um, but if you want to get in touch with Les Cliff at Frame Around, he has huge stocks of these pictures. Uh, they are actually prints, but they're prints made to look like oil paintings. And uh, they're really good for decorating around in the model room. There's another one over there. And the Weir Yard sign, uh, don't ask me where I got it from. It was a present from the Cupboard Monkey. Uh, don't forget as well, merchandise available. Plug, plug, plug. And uh, what else have we got going on? Uh, I've changed the album cover that's in there. Uh, Katy Perry, one of the boys, just because. There's some more of those prints. Again, if you really like the look of those, do speak to Les Cliff. I'm sure he'd be more than happy to uh, sell you some more out of his stock. They are really, really good. And that brings to a close our brief whistle-stop tour of the locomotive rolling stock up here on Weir Yard. So I hope you enjoyed that quick whistle-stop tour. Um, it's not really the video that I was hoping to put out today, but it's been great having your company anyway. Don't forget to like this video, share it too, and also subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. And uh, hopefully normal service will be resumed. But until next time... This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take really good care of yourself. That's the most important. And hopefully see you here again next time. Till then, take care. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. 
I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, and Judge Mortis. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.